Hello, my friends, and welcome to Lesson 7, Basic Finishing. All right, my name is Amy D. McKnight, for those of you who don't know me, and this is the Epically Creative Rigid Heddle Weaving course. In this lesson, you will learn how to simply secure the ends of your weaving while on the loom, three easy methods of securing your fringe, how to wet finish your woven cloth, finishing your weaving with whip stitching. Now, as I mentioned before, we will learn how to hem stitch in another video, in another module, but these are just the basics. And so continuing on, just like we started by hem stitching, we're going to finish with hem stitching. Hem stitching holds the warp in place until you're ready to not braid or twist the ends of your, of your cloth. You can take it out or you can leave it in. If you're going to leave it in, then you kind of sort of want to use a, um, a thread that kind of matches the color of the work that you're doing. Just pretty much you're going to use the same weft threads you were, you were weaving with. You're going to thread a tapestry needle with warp thread if using um, thick yarn or three to four lengths of the weft thread. So if you were using like a super thick yarn, you may just want to go ahead and finish with a few picks of a thinner yarn and then use that. But if you want to finish with that thick yarn, you want to use a thinner yarn when you're doing your finishing. It will make your edge not pucker as much. If you want to go for that, that's perfectly fine too. You're going to whip stitch across from your dominant side and you're going to work across. So I am right-handed. So I'm going to go right to left. I'm actually slightly ambidextrous, so I can go left to right if I have to, but I prefer going right to left. If you're left-handed, then go left to right. So you see I've threaded my tapestry needle. Trust me, it is about three to four lengths of my of the width of my weaving. So that's three to four lengths of the of the width of your weaving. You're gonna insert the needle down and over the desired number of threads. I'm doing what's called a four by four, approximately four by four block. So I'm going down four threads and over four threads, approximately. I don't generally get hung up on these things. I do not count my warp threads to make sure that they are perfect because, well, that's just not my style. But if you want to do that, you are perfectly, perfectly welcome to do that. You're going to reinsert the needle directly above where you came up and do it again. Four over, four down, and go over. You're going to have straight lines in the front and diagonal bars on the back if you do it this way. You don't have to do it this way, but this is just the way I'm doing it. When you reach the end, you're going to needle weave the tail back into the weaving and out to the back. Now, there are three easy methods for securing your fringe after you've um, taken it off the loom. You can secure it with knots, as you can see. In this one, I didn't even I didn't even do the whip stitch. I was walking on the wild side, so I just kind of pulled it off and quickly made sure I kind of knotted that in just to make sure it didn't go anywhere. That was one of my first weavings. You can secure it with braids, or you can secure it with twists. It's whatever makes you happy. You can make them as even or as random as you like. This is your thing, and you're going to do it however it makes you happy. You can eyeball it, as what I do, or you can do the math if you want to make sure that each and every section is exactly the same. Don't get too hung up if you got a couple that are short or above. I promise you, nobody's going to be paying that much attention. And if they do, then they needed to find something wrong and you bless them with that opportunity. So look at it like that. All right. Wet finishing. Wet finishing is the first washing and drying of your woven cloth. It is the final step in making a piece of cloth and it turns the woven fibers into fabric. So it allows the fibers of the cloth to kind of relax into each other and stabilize. And this is essential if you plan to use the cloth for making clothing, right? So if you're doing a wall hanging, you do not have to wet finish your wall hanging. 
You may want to steam it with like one of those handheld steamers or something just to make sure everything is the way you want it, but you don't have to wet finish it. However, if you want to be want to make cloth, you really do need to wet finish your work. It's kind of important because you don't want that first wash to be after you've made your thing because um, you can do something crazy. And also, it's going to be easier to cut the cloth when it's wet finished. Now, wet finishing is generally more aggressive than regular washing. So, I'm going to keep this really simple. There are some specialized pastes and solutions that you can use. Feel free to look them up. I'm trying to do this for the for the general audience who has access to blue dish detergent. Um, you can use blue dish detergent. There's a name brand for it. Um, or a dye-free or fragrance-free laundry detergent. You're going to fill, you can use one tub. I'm using two for illustration purposes, but you're going to fill a tub or sink big enough to hold your weaving with water. Because I'm not using making, the piece that I'm using is not huge. I'm using just pretty much um, mixing bowls. So for wool, you want to use, put it as hot as you can stand, and then you're going to do a warm rinse. For cotton, you're going to use hot water. You may want to wear gloves and use a cool rinse. And for acrylics, acrylic blends, you're going to generally just use warm water or follow the instructions on the side panel of the, um, of the yarn. Now, you're going to gently agitate the cloth in the water to help the threads begin to settle in. Some fibers require more or less agitation. So for wool, Wool actually does this really cool thing called blooming. And as you agitate the cloth, you want to do it and, and really agitate the cloth. Maybe not rub it, but just like move it around in the water. And it's going to get to a point where you can't poke your finger through it or run your, you're going to run your nail across it and your nail isn't going to be able to poke through the fiber. You don't want to over agitate because otherwise if you're doing wool, you will get felt and you may not be going for that. If you're going for that, then great. But if not, then, then you want to pay attention that you're not, you're not making your things shrink and felt up. Um, that, that, that's not a good surprise. Next up, we got cotton. Cotton does not full really or bloom. The agitation though will help the thread settle into their final position. And, f and if you have a blend or an acrylic or a synthetic, you're going to gently agitate. By and large, you may or may not see much of a change, but um, it still is good just to, you know, make whatever's going to happen happen before you cut into that cloth or um, before you give it to someone else to wash so that they don't get any fun surprises. All right. After you have done your agitation, your first um, wetting or washing of the cloth, you're going to rinse it. And then you're going to lay it on a clean towel. You're going to fold the sides of the towel over. And then you're going to roll the towel. And you're going to just kind of roll it. You're, you're going to gently squeeze it. You're not going to wring it. And then you're going to lay it to dry. When your fabric is dry, you're going to get your scissors and you're going to trim those ends close to the fabric. You want to do this after you've wet finished, not before, because in the process of wet finishing, your threads are going to move around. They may draw in a little bit. And so you want them to be where they're going to be in their finished place before you go and clip them. Yes. Save those tails. You can use them for add-ins later. All right, y'all. So in this video, I showed you how to simply secure the ends of your weaving while on the loom. I also shared three easy methods for securing your fringe, and I showed you how to wet finish your woven cloth. Now, I want you to work along with me as I finish up my woven cloth on the loom, as I secure my fringe, and as I wet finish the cloth. In the next lesson, you're going to learn where to find further information in popular weaving books, and also what's going to be coming up in our next module. If you haven't already, I get it. You wanted to see the whole thing, but go ahead and download the Basics of Weaving Game Board and fill it out as you go through the information. And um, yeah, if you share it on, on social media, hashtag Creative Weaving Basics so that we can all see what people are doing. But better yet, join my weaving community. Um, it's www.myweavingcommunity.com forward slash join. 
And in there, there's going to be other people who are on the same path with you. You can interact with them in an off Facebook um, community. It's not Facebook. It is a private network, private community platform. And um, it's a great way to be able to share and connect with other people. You'll find out more information about all of what is in the community at the different levels at www.myweavingcommunity.com forward slash join. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you learned. Subscribe to this channel. Like, seriously, um, I'm, I'm putting out my best stuff here. Some of my best stuff. I got some more stuff that, that hasn't been done yet. The best is yet to come, but you're getting some good stuff on this channel. So why aren't you subscribed? I just don't understand. Subscribe and ring the notification bell so you'll know when I put out the rest of these videos that are coming and share this share this video there is someone who is wanting to know this information and learn it in a systematic way so go ahead and share this this is um i'm putting it out to be a blessing to the weaving community and you can bless somebody else by sharing it so that they can um learn something that maybe they didn't know all right y'all that's it for this video thank you so much for watching again and i will see you in the next video. Bye.